All right, so another school closure check-in. I'm checking in with Principal Lyons from Pine Glen Elementary. Nice to see your face, John. Nice to see you too, Patrick. Um, so we're, we just got word um, about the governor's extended closure. So uh, mm. our heads are spinning a little bit with that, mm. I know. But um, that aside, what, is, um, what has it been like for you for the last week plus? Um, what's your routine, routine been like now that your world's been turned upside mm. down for you and your family? It's been a change. It's uh, some of things have been positive in that uh, it's been very nice when I'm out in the yard to see neighbors go by and wave to them and, you know, catch up from a distance. And uh, it's been great too going for hikes outside and running into neighbors as well. And uh, one of the things we've kind of done as a family is the night before we kind of make a list of what our goals are for the day things that we want to accomplish and we have some flexibility with the schedule, but we still know some things that we'd like to get done. No, that's great to put some structure to it like that. And actually to do that the night, um, the night before is a great idea. Um, it's funny cause I've had the same experience walking around my neighborhood, you know, more activity in the neighborhood. Um, I don't really know the people that well. I think that's the way it is with a lot of people in their neighbors, but people are very friendly waving. Um, I think, in a lot of ways, the world has slowed down for us and uh, we're making connections locally that we weren't making before. At least that's the case for me. Yeah, I'm experiencing the same thing. Um, so how are you staying connected uh, You know, with your family members, people that you are used to seeing day to day that you aren't able to see now that we're on our mm -hmm. uh, social distancing? One of the things we've done is uh, we have text chains going with my wife's side of the family and my side of the family. And then at night we've done video conferencing and my parents have nine grandchildren. So it's a big spread in age from three to 15. So that's we're great. all on there and uh, talking at night. So that's been great to stay in touch. So know what one person, and I'll say her name, Fadine, mm -hmm. um, she had recommended putting the device at the end of the dinner table. Yeah. If you have like older family members that might be home alone and they can't get mm -hmm. out right now, and having dinner with them and having the device right there. So my brother and I, my brother's in Pennsylvania, have done that with my mother. Mm -hmm. and so that's been cool to include her in that. So yeah. thanks to Fadine for that for that uh, tip because that was really helpful and my mother loves it. It's a great idea. Um, what about, I know we all know we have more time on our hands right now. Mm -hmm. And now with the governor's announcement, we know we have another month that we're mm -hmm. going to be, you know, kind of separated from one another mm -hmm. and, in a different routine, any type of passion-based activity or new type of learning, um, mm -hmm. something new that you're gonna take on with the spare time you have? Um, well, one of the things is my, one of my daughters who's younger uh, loves to cook and she's been doing different recipes every day and things like that. So I've kind of been helping her out and supervising her with the cooking. And my other daughter loves to paint. And uh, she's been doing a lot of painting on canvases. So that's been fun to watch. And I've had an opportunity to read books that aren't necessarily related to education or pedagogy, which has been fantastic. That's been a nice treat. That's great. And going back to, I know the, the, the cooking ideas, I've seen a lot of families trying that out because obviously there's math involved. Um, there's all kinds of skills there that you can work on. And mm -hmm. Things don't have to be like overly formal sometimes, but that's a great opportunity for you and your daughter to share that experience. How's that been? Um, my, it's been great. And I think my favorite thing was she made fried Oreos with an air fryer, Ooh. which were just absolutely fantastic. I think anything that ends in Oreo is usually a pretty good idea. Yeah. But fried Oreos sounds like the tops field fair to me. Yeah. That's the only time I've had one of those. You had them at home. I'm jealous. Um, so the last part, and I think you've alluded to some of the experiences you've already had, um, you know, during this time with your family. Any other um, sources of gratitude you want to share? Things that may have become possible because of the shutdown? Yeah, I just, my, I have just tremendous gratitude for all our nurses and doctors and um, our first responders, my uh, sister-in-law is a nurse in the emergency room and just her going in every day and her husband's in biotech and 
he's been working on research and medicine and drugs and things to combat the virus. And the two of them um, have both, while doing this, also been home with their students as well and navigating those waters. It's just been uh, tremendous. And I just um, want to give gratitude out to all the parents too. Um, we greatly, greatly miss all the students. I miss seeing their faces every day and I miss seeing the teachers. And as I'm experiencing the world of teaching my own students, even with over 20 years of experience in education, it's a challenge to teach your own children. And it's a whole different dynamic than teaching other people's children. Definitely. I didn't, I wasn't able to really quantify the feeling I was having because it's just so weird like I feel great to be able to do the job we do, but now it's unlike any time I've ever experienced. And mm -hmm. it's really, it is grief that we're dealing with because of the loss. Um, I know fortunately it's not the loss of uh, life or anything. And hopefully none of us have to experience that during this time, but it's the loss of our routine and the, the students and the faculty we deal with just bring joy and energy to our lives. And we're really mm -hmm. lacking that right now. Mm -hmm. I've also found um, a lot of students have told me that they have greatly appreciated their pets and oh. their pets have been a great source of comfort in this time, you know, and a change in schedule. And um, I have two guinea pigs, Bumble and Ginger, who have been picking up the book I've been reading aloud to students every weekday. And we've been having a lot of fun with them. That's great. I've, I've seen those on Instagram. So if, <laughs> if parents weren't familiar, um, Mr. Lyons is doing some reading on Instagram on his Instagram account um, with his with his family pets. So that is it's fun for the kids to see and get a glimpse into your house during this time. And I know they feel better just seeing you. They know Mr. Lyons is OK and seeing yeah. your smiling face, I think, makes them feel a little bit better. Yeah. And I love hearing communication from students too. what they've read, the projects they've worked on or just some of the things they've experienced. Yeah, so I know if a, if a parent's watching this or a student, um, please send Mr. Lyons an email um, or send a video through Instagram if, if you're willing to do that. Check with your parents if you're a student on that one. But just share what's going on because I and do that with all your teachers. Make sure you're checking in because I know how much uh, of a loss everybody's feeling right now. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. I'm guessing we'll be checking in again um, since we know we're going to be out for another month. So thanks yeah. for doing this. All right. Thank you for having me.